And I'm looking at the agenda. The first thing is, does anybody have any changes to the agenda? Changes with an S, not a D? Well, besides that uh, change the changes, it looks good. Do you have and it, um, Ron? Do you have it in the screen? posted. Were they? They weren't, but, but you, or, um, Bouture, you, you sent um, minutes um, like late last night, right? Yeah. And then, uh, I don't think I'm on Bouture's list. Oh, yeah. No, I, I will add you, Sam. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's all right, Bouture. Okay. It's not like oh, we're gonna yeah. minutes posted. <laughs> uh, so so um, speaking of the the minutes um, and speaking of typos, um, should we? Um, um, does anybody have any comments on the meeting or the meeting minutes that um, Bojur did besides typos? I would. No no comments for me. It, it looked good. Uh, so I would accept a motion to approve the minutes um, with the. Uh, ability of the of the clerk uh, or staff to um, up, update them um, for uh, you know for uh, minor typos and grammar correction. I'll move to accept. Right. I'll second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, I should have had discussion first. I'm sorry, but but given that it was unanimous, um, I think that they're good. Um, looks like we have uh, one. Member of the public, um, Ms. Renner, did you have anything to add? All righty. Um, given um, uh, hearing none, um, the public to be heard. Or, oh, I see a hand raised by, is that Darren? Yes, I actually just wanted to make a quick comment that I don't know who else received it, but um, let me turn my camera on. I got a notice in the mail that Burlington Telecom will be expanding to Essex. I don't know if it's just Essex Junction or whereabouts, but just thought you all would like to know that. Cool. I don't know any of the details. It looks like it's roughly the same as the cheapest you can get with Comcast and all the other um, uh, services, but it is fiber optic, so presumably. That's yes. great. That is one more provider, one more option. Exactly. Uh, if you um, did, did, did you did you get that in um, like an email or something from them, Darren? I got it as a mailer. Let me go grab it. Sorry, it was on, on the desk, but the blow dryer is running. All right. Well, I, I guess I'm saying I, I don't think we need it now, but it would be a lovely thing to uh, include in the meetings or in the minutes or something. All right, let me throw this up on my screen here. It says something gig is coming. Certainly a big flyer. <laughs> it's got some of the details on the back, but it mostly says That's calls nice. to find out. That's good. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, that's uh, that's exciting. Looking forward to hearing more. Yep. That was all. Nice. Thank you, Darren. All right, so um, under um, um, given um, given Andy Cooper's resignation from this committee, that I am um, running this meeting as the act the acting chair. Um, I um, um, let's um uh, so and uh, in order to Darren has has um, uh, stated has stated to me that he wanted to. Um, uh, like hand over the responsibilities of running and recording this meeting, um, but you need an official chair for that. So on the one hand, that's, I think, a feature for us and easy for Darren. On the other hand, um, we do have a vacancy. It would be useful, I think, to wait until um, we have full five people to have a have, um, new chair, vice chair, and um, and or clerk. Um, I'm just wondering what Botour and uh, Jeff thought of that, of which, which way we should go. So, so I, I think that, uh, you know, given Given the experience that we have, uh, you know, with uh, with Brian's 
experience and, and uh, the the longest standing member of the committee, I would I would move to nominate Brian and move him up from vi vice chair to chair. Yeah, um, definitely. OK, I, uh, I think technically we should finish discussion before you do that, Jeff. So but it but uh, yeah. well, and, and it kind of started out with the conversation being that, you know, you have the longest experience of us um, you know, in terms of the, the duration of time you've spent on the committee, uh, the commission and knowing all the initiatives that we have, you know, it'd be good to, you know, from my perspective to have somebody that you know, has that history, has that, you know, to be able to continue the initiatives that we've been moving forward uh, for over a year now. Uh, Batur and I came in at about the same time uh, back about a year ago, a little over a year ago. So, you know, it, it, I think it, there's a lot of things that with the contact list, the business contact list and some of the initiatives that we've had for quite a while, um, it'd be good to have that continuity. All right. Well, Thanks, Jeff. Well, then, um, but Jordan, did you have anything you, you wanted to add? I, I would just say that, you know, um, you know, if uh, we don't have uh, we don't have a chair right now because obviously uh, of uh, any situation. And um, if um, when the Tanisha is not here, but we have um, we have a quorum and um if if it's um if it's okay with the with the you know regulations and stuff and i think it makes sense to uh, to to have a new chair to vote for a new chair and um i don't know how tanisha would feel without being part of this but um i think i don't yeah so she's she's relatively new but i would say you know uh you know it's good to have uh, certainty and continue continuity <laughs> We could we could obviously go on until we have another you know member and have full uh, full full committee membership and uh, and then vote and then get this thing thing matter settled. But we could do it now. I I would, I would go for both and definitely I support uh, Jeff's uh, nom Jeff's uh, suggestion uh, um, and nomination of uh, Brian. You are uh, you've been uh, you've been great uh, asset for us here and you. Uh, so it was uh, uh, exciting to tap into your skills, experience, and your yeah, yeah. You've been uh, you've been uh, longest serving, so that obviously you know it's a it's a very easy choice, and I'm thankful uh, thankful that you are that you are yeah, very grateful that you're interested in taking this role. This is a responsibility, a little more work. So uh, thanks for stepping in. All right. Well. Thank, thanks, guys. I wanted to I just wanted to make sure that we thought that moving forward uh, and not waiting was the first thing. I'm flattered by um, the comments you made. Um, so I guess uh, I guess Jeff, will you formally make that <laughs> the movement? Now? I, I would formally nominate Brian to be, take over the, the the role of chair of the Economic Development Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a second. Yes, oh, we have a second. All right. All, all, all in favor. All right. All right. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, on uh, since we're going forward with that, I think um, especially if we uh, uh, so I, 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 um, I think we should also have a, a vice chair and the um, I travel a lot. Sometimes I might not be available. And um, so um, um, I would uh, I would nominate uh, the second longest serving remaining member, um, Je Jeff Benjamin, as a uh, vice chair. Um, is it, um, is there, is there a second? Uh, yeah, I just make a correction that it's not here. It, I was the second longest, but, oh, okay. it, but I, w I would prefer Jeff to, uh, if he's interested, uh, to, um, uh, step in and, uh, take this, uh, uh, and I would definitely support that idea. Yeah. And I will, uh, I'll be happy to remain as a secretary and uh, continue helping in that regard and other ways I can. All right, so let me correct my like uh I I would uh, let me correct my nomination then let me like I nominate uh, Jeff Benjamin to be the the uh, vice chair of the Economic Development Commission. I second it. All right. Um, any any discussion? No, I I I welcome that uh, nomination and Votor. I think your uh, your role as clerk has really proven to be uh, a real benefit 
the, the your note taking and and how completely you've been doing this. I think it makes sense to uh, to have you remain as the clerk. I, mean, I I think that that's great. And you know, given the small number of people that we have on our team, I, yeah. <laughs> I guess I fall into this position by default. But I will humbly accept it. Great. So thank you, Jeff. All right. Well, we did take, uh, all in favor. Yes. Aye. Aye. Um, that looks unanimous as well. So congratulations. Um, um, uh, I was going to move on to the uh, thanks, guys. Thank you for your trust in me. I was going to move on to the the business contact list of status, but I see that Sam has her, her hand raised. I, I just would like to ask. It is very helpful. Um, Mr. New Chair, when an email comes right before a day or two before our meetings with the agenda attached, um, something that um, has been done in the past, if you're able to do that, that would be great. Sounds like a good idea. Cool. Thanks, Sam. Um, all right, so before we call, this meeting was called to order, um, we were talking about um, um, actually getting things uh, accomplished as opposed to just talking about things. So um, I was wondering if um, Botur and or Wiso, I think, wanted to give a quick update on the status of the, the business contact list. Um, yeah, I can start. Uh, yeah, I uh, uh, always so followed up uh, since our last meeting, but um, uh, that I, I, I was part of, I participated. I was uh, busy last month and I couldn't join the last two meetings. And uh, I, uh, I was not, uh, unfortunately, as I hoped to, but I think uh, with Oiso, it seems to be ready and she has some great ideas and I was uh, on, on, on the EDC committee member, sort of, uh, uh, you know, with Annie coordinating together with OISO. So I think uh, I, I plan to reach out to her um, after this meeting and uh, and then um, uh, and then email, copy everybody uh, what, uh, you know, uh, formally some, some uh, what are the suggestions and uh, improvements to uh, what are the next steps to finish this uh, you know, to, to complete this project would be. And then um, I think uh, with uh, with clarity here, we, we kind of got, uh, I think the previous meeting was mostly about cannabis meeting and uh, the other one. And, um, and um, yeah, we had a few things going on, uh, maybe too much, but uh, I think if we focus and uh, I, I take uh, a little bit more, <laughs> uh, you know, um, I committed, uh, I, I, but I, I, I failed on my commitment, and I'm sorry. I apologize, uh, everybody. Uh, I, I will need, I will follow up today with the uh, week so and uh, and copy on the email everybody uh, as uh, to what needs to be done uh, to to complete this. Uh, because there's certain things that uh, I believe a WISO wants to uh, or needs and maybe maybe would like to have our help with to so this database is 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 good and and to uh, uh, um, a standard that she would like to have as a as a staff member in 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 charge of uh, of this uh, document to help to make it useful and productive and some uh, a good tool for her. So I, I'm I'm ready to help and uh, I would I will reach out. It's my turn. Ball is on my court. So from this, but anybody from you know EDC, uh, you guys you know welcome and uh, to share your comments. You know Brian, Jeff, and Tanisha, uh, Tanisha, and uh, but I will yeah I will. I, as I said, uh, I did publicly <laughs> stated my interest in in taking, uh, you know, uh, in and taking um, some um, action in this, but I, I I didn't do it, and I was very busy at work. But I will uh, from this meeting. Yes. So, Botur, is that is that in a publicly or a, an accessible location internally for our team, or is that something yeah. that that, that uh, I haven't seen the latest version of it in a bit? So I didn't know if that's something that you have in a spreadsheet that you want to email over to yeah. to Brian and I and Tatanisha, or yeah, it's a something. Google shared document. I I don't I I believe you you have access. You may you may have 
get got an email from Annie uh, some time ago, but I will share the link again. Um, but last Perfect. time I shared it was with Jeff and uh, with Oiso, but Oiso obviously has access to it. And, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you were left out, and uh, we will. Uh, I will get your copy on that. So it, it is a shared Google document, and uh, it has. Uh, it's, uh, it has all three tabs in there, and one for our, uh, uh, you know, overall uh, calendar 2021 um, vision, mission, goals, and objectives and stuff. The other one is for uh, committees, list of committees, and the schedule uh, that we would like to, uh, you know, uh, meet uh, to uh, uh, to. Uh, you know, list of committees that we sign up to go and uh, and take part and learn more about them. And then third one is the it says a business list and it has all the data there sorted and it just needs a little more work to uh, to be usable and not usable but to be uh, an effective tool for Oiso and the team in this. So, okay. and, yeah, thanks i'll share the list you guys tatanese is having a heck of a time trying to get into the meeting um darren i don't know what the telephone number is would you happen to know what the telephone number is for her to dial in yes it is one sec uh 802-377-3784, and I give you, I'll give you the conference ID as well. Um, okay. 626-758-56-POUND. 626-758-POUND? 758 56 pounds 6567 Okay, thank you. I'll yeah. convey that to her. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Louisa. Did you raise your hand to um, help to help Tatiana? Yes, tell okay. you that. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, all right. So it, it's it's uh, ah, welcome, Tatanisha. Oh. All right, you join. Oh, welcome. Good morning. Um, okay. So it, it's my my understanding from the last time I looked at um, this document that um, well. Two points here. One that it, it was um, we're working on this as a you know committee work product, and um, that's why it's on a Google document. Um, uh, Darren, that um, uh, means it hasn't been handed over to the uh, to the town um, as a as a public as a public record yet. Is that correct? That's correct. I mean, staff don't have access to it, and at this point, I don't believe it's considered a public record or a um, public information. Okay, fair enough. Um, but my goal here is to um, get the get um, get this thing into a um, um, into something that's useful for the town and for say reaching like like I know that Oisa uh, wanted to uh, reach out to all the the um, sole proprietors in Essex when there was a uh, state funding available for that sort of thing. So. Um, uh, is it the, what the kind of the hole in it at the moment um, is that we don't have we don't have phone numbers or emails addresses for all of the companies in there? Is that right, Batur? Yes. All right. we don't have, uh, and okay. we don't have businesses called out by type. We don't okay. know which are the restaurants. We yeah. don't know which are the sole proprietors. We don't know which are the corporations under 100 people or under 20 people. Yeah. We we just don't know that so we we have some work to do on it a okay. lot. well i'm just uh I, I was trying to find a metric that we could use to um um hand, you know to um call it complete now maybe if we get like uh, 50 percent of the businesses with um contact uh with with uh, contact information then mm -hmm. we can um hand, you know, hand it over to the town i i, I think uh, uh is it is it I think I heard. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Luisa, that you're getting a you're getting an intern that might be able to finish it up if we get it started. We have a part-time position budgeted in the new fiscal year, and so we have to go through the process of hiring that mm -hmm. new part-time position and get them on board. Okay, so we will will have. Is it? But is it? Yes. Is um. Yes. It's not an intern, it's a part-time position. Okay, that, uh, it's a, with those two corrections, thank you. Which I imagine uh, could grow to a full-time position. That's the only reason why I clarify that it's not um, an intern. Well, and, 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 is, and I'm sort of making an assumption here that, um, that that's something that you could assign to him or her. Um, I just oh, wanna... absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right, so maybe we can, um, uh, as a team, make it a goal to get to 
because we like uh, to um, split up the spread up the split up the spreadsheet and get to and get to 50 50 um, in um, numbers emails and uh, and uh, business type um, yeah um, um, but you were you, you were saying you're going to take a look at it. Can you maybe um, like hand out? Because uh, I, I don't think having spoken to Jeff offline, I don't think this is uh, that like he's he doesn't have um, that. My my time is spring up, so I have time to do this. So I'm so I'm volunteering to take like a third. Um, um, is that and maybe can we split up like a sixth of it to uh, to me you and maybe maybe Tatanisha? Is that some like do some uh, business reach out, get this information for us? Is that something you're willing to do? Yeah, yeah, I, that's what I was gonna do. I was, um, I was, I needed to. Uh, um, what I needed to do is get my, you know, uh, ideas on how to um, best split the work up so we can finish. Uh, you know, get to uh, get to a conclusion with this project and um, um, uh, incorporating, uh, uh, you know, OESO's suggestions and maybe uh, maybe. Uh, other staff members have any recommendations for the for the uh, you know what other metrics we should add maybe what other um, you know um, um, well, is it, I mean is it um, I mean can we just like divide it divide it into six alphabetically or something and then get started is that yeah but, but before we get started maybe we we would like to you know with uh, we sort of finalize what you know, categories or uh, any additional categories that we want to add or, you know, or, or we want to get rid of something just to finalize the format. And then once we have the format, we know that's how we want it. Then we go out and then we just double check everything, you know, because uh, we have most of the information there. It just needs to be uh, the phones possibly or, you know, the mostly it's emails. We need to get the emails. and okay. um, Yeah, phones are, you know, the, the business name name, contact person, all available online publicly. So, and then the other one is, uh, it's a business category. So, uh, you know, that I know of that OESA would like to have that, you know, by, uh, is that, uh, you know, what, is it a sole proprietorship? Is that, a, you know, a partnership? Is that a corporation? What now, how number of employees? And now, now also, you know, what type of business maybe we could add? She's asking, you know, is it a restaurant? Is it a, you know, or is it a, you know, uh, I don't know, spa or some other thing? Is it a, um, you know, so maybe we'll finalize the format. Format seems to be what I thought initially. I put it together. Uh, it, I would well, like to, I kept it simple to start with, and now it's a good idea. I, I like her suggestions. She she wants to add this, she wants to add that because they're you know, and and that to make it more you know usable and 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 an, and an exciting, interesting, you know, important thing tool for her. So it's it's just another, you know, okay. like a yeah uh, well, instrument to well the category is the nice format and then split it yeah. Okay. Well, the, the the categories that Uiso just said now seem to be well. I, I, I bet you that we can figure that out from the next the next code, which is like the business category for that that'll be on the Secretary of State's business listing. So, yeah. um, but that that um, um Uiso, maybe can, can you send me the list of categories you were thinking just so that I can double check that assertion? Um, sure. Okay. Um, and then yeah, maybe um, Botour, um we can sit down this weekend and um, decide a way to split split these up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We just need and it'll set up, set uh, aside a separate time, which we haven't done. You know, like uh, me and Oiso or Annie, and you know now Annie's out. So maybe yeah. you, we are three of us. You know, we need to sit outside of this and then you know talk it out and get this final. That's what hasn't happened. Right, and to be clear, I'm not um, I'm not disinviting Jeff or Tatanisha. I'm um, trying to yeah. not uh, yeah. not have anyone. Him, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm just help. Ta uh, Tatanisha has her hand up. Hi, sorry I'm late. <clears throat> I had trouble getting on. I don't know what's wrong with the link or whatever. Um, but I um I had a question. I wanted to know um. Do we have like um, like an ID or something? Like if we wanted to um, go to a business and find out this information face to face? Um, that is a good question, Tatanisha. Um, what um, what you need are business cards. Um, okay. Darren, how did um, 
Uh, Jim Berniger was in charge of that previously. Is that? Do you know how he did that? I do not. Greg, actually, you might. No, sorry to put you on the spot, Greg. <laughs> I, I, I believe he maybe did it himself. Yeah, that's what I was going to guess. Yeah, I'm not sure how Jim did it. Um, I actually can't even remember. We, we used to do it in-house for new staff people. I don't know if we still do that, if we ship it out. I can I can ask around, though. Um, so, Tanisha, you're interested. Is anybody else on the committee interested in business cards? I've already got mine. Where'd you get them, Jeff? Ed. I think it was uh, from Greg. Oh, uh, from Yeah, I got mine from Jim. Jim, yeah. Jim yeah, was Jim doing it for out. everybody. You know, so. <laughs> do you have? Do you guys have an example of what one of them looks like, just so that we can try to be consistent with this? I mean, yeah. see if they look like the town of Essex cards or. Oh. Jeff, can you could you take a picture of that and just or Brian and just um, I can't even I can't even see anything now. My phone is going in a circle. At least you can hear us though. It's <laughs> well, Char, do you have business cards? Uh I, I didn't end up getting it from Jim, but no, I'm I think I'm fine. Okay, I'll um yeah I can I can try try to see if I can get them from um I get them for Tatanisha and, and Boter. Brian or Jeff, if you could just like take a picture and, and email it to me. Yeah. Hey, um, are you, uh, Jeff is nodding, even though Greg asked me to do it. You are you on that, Jeff? Uh, I I can. Okay, I just don't want us both or neither to do it. <laughs> well, how about we both try to do it, and then one of them will get to Greg. All right. <laughs> They better be the same style too, otherwise I'm just going to make an executive decision. Yeah. Well, you know, Brian's the chair, so he's. Well, I mean, be careful. They'll end up purple if you let make me in charge. Oh no. Okay, I'll send you one. Brian, uh, Brian, you you may want to update uh, uh, Tatanisha on what we did, maybe because she joined late. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh... Yeah. Um. Hold on one second. I need to go out and come back in. My phone is just like turning and I couldn't even log do my screen. So I have to. Okay. Stack. You, you got to exit and come back? Yes. Okay. Our technology. <laughs> I need my it does the opposite of what it is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there it is. <clears throat> and talk to me, I also just realized that the link on the Economic Development Commission page is maybe out of date. Um, so apologies no, for that. Okay. I'm fixing that now. It's okay. <laughs> That's why, because I got a, I, I clicked on the separate link that you sent uh, uh, with a Google invite. I think I didn't try it this morning. The old one. I usually just go through agenda. Yeah, the one on the calendar and on the agenda was correct, but not on the website. Uh, uh -oh. Okay. Uh, all right, so Tatanisha is back? Yes. Welcome. Um, the um, uh, yeah, so um, Botour, I think, was referring to, um, and sorry, we missed this. We would have loved to have your feedback. Um, I, we, uh, um, I, I was uh, named the, officially named the chair, and um, um, Jeff was um, named the uh, the vice chair of the commission. So. Um, that's what you're referring to, right, um, Reporter? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we we were waiting for you, and we didn't know your situation, so we just uh, uh, we decided as we had a quorum of uh, three of us, uh, and then uh, decided to since Annie's left and the vacancy was uh, for the president uh, or the chair of this uh, of the committee. Uh, Jeff nominated Brian and I seconded and Brian nominated uh, Jeff for uh, vice president and uh, I seconded. So now we have formally 
I guess, with a quorum, we have uh, uh, a new uh, posi uh, position is formally announced so and accepted. Yeah, sorry, we didn't mean to uh, exclude you. Oh, no, no problem. I was trying to get in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Technology uh wasn't on my side this morning. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um all right, so the next um item on our on the agenda. Um uh Jeff wanted this Jeff had mentioned to me and I had heard this from the owner of Black Flannel as well. Um I think we're about to get back to as businesses or as the economy starts opening back up. We're gonna very quickly go back to um, uh, low unemployment in Vermont, and, I, and um, Jeff, I think had some ideas or suggestions on maybe some ways we could help out Essex Biz. Did you want to take that away, Jeff? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my my concern or what I heard, um, I had a conversation with with Chris Kessler at Black Flannel, as well as a couple other businesses in the area that have really been having a hard time trying to find workers, um, people to come in uh, to fill them some open spots and you know, between places like, uh, you know, Black Flannel or Hannaford or, you know, there, there's a couple other ones uh, like even Bagel Market this morning couldn't even open because of lack of workers. So um, they actually had to close for today to open tomorrow. Uh, so what we're finding, at least directly in the Essex area, are a lot of the restaurants um, uh, or even like the movie theater, there are, are have a lot of openings and having trouble trying to find people to fill those spots. Um, so what I wanted to bring up with the committee or the commission was just a, a some brainstorming ideas to see if there's something that we can do uh, to get a list of businesses or reach out outreach to businesses to find out who has openings. Can we host some kind of job fair or you know have some kind of mailing or public uh, something on Facebook or social media or the town website that has a list of people that have openings that we can distribute more um, more readily uh, to to try to get some of these spots filled because what I don't like seeing is places like bagel market that actually had to sh shut their doors this morning because they didn't have enough workers um, so I, I think that there's a lot of need out there and just not enough people and maybe there's not the incentive to get out there and you know to start getting a job again <laughs> but um yeah so that's kind of where i want to start the conversation and see what we had uh where we want to go from there uh, i think Louisa has her hand up yeah um so this wouldn't solve the whole problem but one of the things that occurred to me during part of this conversation is that apparently the problem seems to be that people are earning too much on unemployment to um, give that up to actually take a day job. Um, I don't know whether that's true, but if it were true, one of the things that sort of occurred to me was why not um, tap the emerging job um, seekers, meaning the high school students. A lot of the um, a lot of jobs at at cafes and, and restaurants and movie theaters used to be um, used to be done by high school students. And um, I don't know what the difficulties might be in any of that, but um, as sort of first job experiences, that could be great job training. Maybe there's some other way to get them to partner with someone else in the industry to figure, you know, to learn something more than just, um, you know, the good job skills that we all learned when we did jobs when we were teenagers. And um, anyway... Just a thought. Maybe so. Maybe a job fair at the high school for after school um, evening or weekend jobs. Clearly, they couldn't do anything during the school day. Yeah, I think as we're getting closer to the end of the school year, too, that may open up yeah. more. There's a lot of activity going on with some of the events uh, near the end of the school year. Yep. Yeah, and I was and my. Um... Yeah, my my nephew um, is about to resign from Target because they are giving him more hours than he asked for because they don't have enough people. So, uh, you know, it's a yeah. it's a problem. It's interesting. Yeah, I just read about it um, the other day. I don't know uh, whether Vermont Digger or Seven Days, but 
I, th I thought it was, I felt like initially I didn't read the article, but I felt like it was just, oh, okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a more of an abrupt opening or more of a rush, you know, like a situation from being closed and now businesses are all ready to hopefully jump in and they're, you know, so maybe I thought it was, oh, it's probably a temporary thing, you know, like a week or two things will get back people as they wean off from one, you know, uh, move on from one being an, an collecting or whatever if they have to if they had to an employment or something now uh, yeah the, but sam probably knows the date that um that people are supposed to start applying for regular unemployment mm -hmm. um but um but if not then we'd need then the date that the uh the additional unemployment support mm -hmm. from the federal government um, would be the date that we'd be shooting for, which I think is midsummer. I feel so it's July yes. or August. Yes, July or we so. Okay. But the le state legislature currently is looking at um, what what they're going to do about the unemployment insurance, which may or may not include the fifty dollars for. Um, child care. Um, this is a universal problem that is national. Um, this morning uh, at about 7.15, CBS had a, a special report on this happening in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, this is happening all over. Yeah. It's not just that they can gain more money on unemployment, but it's also a case of child care and uh, oh. schools hadn't opened up five days a week universally. Um, it's a critical issue, but a very tough nut to crack. There are over 6,000 uh, job openings currently on the DOL website. Yeah. Um, manufacturers are having trouble with entry level jobs. Um, so it, it it's a real challenge right now. Um, Raj, I see your hand, but I wanted to ask Sam a question first. If you don't, um, apologies. Um, is 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 um. Is, is the, are, are y'all uh, keeping track of those jobs? Or are you letting DOL do it? Um, I think um, what um, w it would be like if we could if we could collect uh, the Essex specific ones onto an EDC job listing page or something um, in an easy and automatic way. That would be I think good for good for Essex at least. Um, I don't know if that's possible or plausible or reinventing a wheel that you've already built. Um. No, we don't have the staff to maintain the list of who's looking for employees. DOL uh, tracks that information via people contacting. You know, there's been, DOL has had problems with the scamming, with false applications. I'm sure you all saw that yeah. our former governor, Dean got 10 packets because 10 different times people tried to claim on insurance and unemployment insurance with his social security number. So um, that has compounded the problem, but it's Department of Labor that keeps statistics, Brian, on that, that has a team for that. Well, we could also make that part of our initiatives with our spreadsheet, with our contact list is right. you know, when we reach out to them. If if we give them a, a mechanism to submit when they're looking for employees, yeah. uh, you know, if, if we had some kind of email or we had some kind of way to submit the business themselves to, you know, send it to us with a link, you know, send your resumes here then we can have that something in place to actually uh, make it a publicly available list uh, right. for, for Essex. You know, yeah, right. Well, that. It, that becomes complicated. You need some very specific program algorithms 
for that kind of thing. If you're talking about being proactive, your best bet is to try and see about a job fair um, to have businesses participate. Um, as an RDC in central Vermont, I ran an annual job fair, you know, contacting businesses. They showed up at the Barry Auditorium. We were open all day. But you have a unique set of circumstances here with people saying, I can do better on unemployment right now than I can do um, seeking uh, employment, especially with the complication of affordable and stable child care. Um, so I would say there are a number of job sites the state's running for that the businesses can go to. And the businesses I work with go right to Department of Labor. And, and there are those Vermont uh, websites where you can, um, both employees and employers can go to right now and see if they match up. Yeah, my concern was, you know, if you have a job fair, there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen to lead up to it, where yeah. when, when Coffee Cup closed, you know, if there was a list that could be distributed on social media right away, hey, you know, you don't have to, worry too much here's here's a list of 15 people from you know manufacturing to hospitality to restaurants there were there's a lot of places that were out there that were scooping up all those employees right, right away right and that happened with coffee cup there were 10 businesses within the first hour of that be made public that contacted um the state of vermont and attempted to contact management at Coffee Cup in order to hire those employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm also, uh, uh, I'm also like uh, worried about rewriting indeed.com here, you know what I mean? So. Right, right. So, uh, there are many places individuals can go to on the web to find a job. The challenge is motivation to get right. them to do that. Yeah. That's that's the problem right now is that I think it's less that they're looking for jobs and more that jobs are looking for them. And so again, that you know, the the more untapped market, the people who haven't really entered the workplace who are not getting unemployment, the college students who haven't worked yet and who didn't who didn't have a full time job before all this started. And so they're not getting unemployment. The people who quit, there are quite a number of people who left. I mean, if we remember a year ago, there were a lot of controversies over um, who um, uh, over people telling their employers that they didn't feel comfortable being at work with COVID and they thought that they'd be eligible for unemployment, but they weren't. So, and I don't know where those people landed, but anyway, yeah, I think that we just need to be creative and think Think where think of where the cracks are to um to find these to find yeah. the people who could be eligible. All right, um, Raj, and then Darren. Um, thanks. Just as a resident, Sam answered or said a couple of the things that I was thinking of sharing. So thanks for that. But a um, couple, one question and then a comment. How much is the unemployment right now? for, you know, we're talking about people who'd rather stay home on unemployment. How, what's that figure? Minimum or the extra? 600 or 800? It was 600, but I didn't know when that expired. I believe it was 300 or 400. 300 or 400. So we're talking about less than minimum wage then. So. Well, that's on top of the, on top of what they would have gotten through unemployment with the state. That's in addition to what they're getting on yeah, unemployment. So it would be, unemployment so it would be on top of like another two hundred dollars right. or but the, the unemployment maybe. they would have received before is what seventy five percent of their regular pay? It's not sixty. Sixty. So they're not even making a hundred percent typically of what they made before. 
in most cases. Okay. So if I made $15 an hour and I'm only getting 60% in unemployment, I'm $100 from the state, that's not really exceeding what I made before in my paycheck. Yeah, I don't know how many people were earning $15 before the Raj. I think that's right. the problem. But I think that even if you look at the curve, you're not talking. Yeah. I just think that this, converse, this this idea that people are being incentivized, and that's the, that's the biggest issue we have. I, I think maybe businesses aren't keeping up with the, which is difficult because I've had to hire people before, but businesses may not be keeping up with the inflationary pressures of wage increases. Um, right. I just want to put that out there that, you know, you're also talking about most of the businesses that were mentioned here are frontline workers during a pandemic. And I don't think you can underestimate. I mean, I can tell you the waiter I had at, at a local restaurant the other day, he would stand six feet away and ask us to match up, mask up before he asked us if we wanted water. Poor guy was like shaking the whole time. He got a nice big tip. But, you know, I, I think that and we just had 16 year olds and up start vaccinating so most of them are not fully vaccinated yet it'll be another two or three weeks before they are so i think you'll probably see some businesses start to get some employees finally i think you know as someone who has a job seeker teenager in the house not seeing a lot of flexibility on the part of business um no predictable schedules and if you've got a team with who needs a predictable schedule for the summer Businesses have to start kind of looking at how they're doing things and, and meeting people where they are in terms of what they need for childcare and what they need for other schedule issues. And maybe need to rethink how they're approaching it, um, especially for part time or three quarter time jobs. There, as I think Brian, you mentioned your nephew leaving because they're trying to give him too many hours. You know, that's not his fault. I'm, I'm not trying to put it back right. on business, but what I'm hearing no. a lot is that, and what we hear in the media a lot coming out of Montpelier lately is that, you know, people are. People are just not wanting to work, and I, I really kind of question that. Um, you're, you're right, I Raj. think that there's it's a it's a give and take a little more than than we're hearing usually. So I just wanted to yeah. throw that out there. It's and finally, I guess I you know, really thrilled to hear that you guys are you all are are working hard on this and trying to figure out how to help um, local businesses. I think that's great. So very much appreciated. Right. Yeah, and to Raj's point that um, I'm, I'm sorry if I made it seem as though I thought that that was the whole problem because I don't. I mean, it's a small portion of the problem, but it's always I think more the, complicated. The large, <laughs> yes, and the larger problem may also be the benefits that you get um, through unemployment if you need the benefits because you can't you can't take a part time job or a lesser job than what you had before if you if you can't cover your insurance and or you're going to lose your insurance through the state or have to pay into it or whatever um, configuration of, of that um, by taking a job that's that pays you less without benefits. Yeah, and that so, unemployment insurance is still taxable, right? So, you know, that and we know that in this pandemic, the, the population most, most impacted has been women. And you know, we've, we've still got schooling going on and, and likely in the summer, people are going to be hesitant or not be able to afford to put their kids in camps. So that's going to be, you know, maybe one of the places we can use some of this ARPA money is for, you know, camp scholarships, if that's possible, um, ways to ways to find, make it so that people can can get um, get that child care they need. And I know that it sounds like a state priority right now, so that's encouraging. Great. Yeah, well, I did. Point. I did get a, an email yesterday from the school, from the Essex Westford School District, that that was said that they had some money that that came on, and they were looking for ways to spend it. Um, you know, they, some ideas from the parents and the community about ways to to use this. Uh, is that something that we could tap into with tying the school district in with some kind of uh, learning program or jobs? You know, job fair for the high school kids, uh, you know, it wouldn't be the pre-K to, to eighth grade kids that, that we're looking for, but, uh, you know, maybe that's something that we work with the school district to to incentivize uh, some people to get out and, and look for some of those jobs at, you know, Hannaford or Wicked Wings or wherever that the places that are looking, not so much the, the IBMs that are looking or the, the global foundries that are looking, uh, but, you know, at least some of the ones that do tend to have those frontline workers um, that could be filled by some of these high school kids. 
All right. Um, well, I, I had uh, Darren had something to say, and then Tatsunisha raised her hand. Um, but I do want to. Um, I, th I think we should uh, um, kind of, if we're going to get to the staff and uh, staff and partner updates, we should uh, wrap wrap this up. If that's all right, Mr. Schibler. Thanks, Brian. Um, I just want to echo what Raj said. I think there's a lot of different factors going into you know the unemployment scene right now. And one of the things that I have heard is that um, it's hard for a daycare to open in, in Essex and in general because there are so many you know hoops you have to jump through and, home, and a lot of just important regulations. But it's not an easy startup cost, and you know it's hard to find a place to rent or at least to, you know, who wants to have a daycare. So, you know, if childcare is an issue in terms of people being able to go back to work and, you know, camps and schools aren't able to fill that need, that might be something the EDC could look at is trying to, you know, figure out places or ways to support the childcare industry um, and find the places for them to open and make sure that they've got um, partners to, you know, talk to landlords and make sure that they've got, you know, folks to help them with some of the state um, uh, permitting regulations they have to go through. And, and you know, we already have EGRP doing a lot of that work. So anything you can do to already scale up, now that competes, I guess, you could argue with anyone that wants to start a private one, but you know, don't let that be the enemy of perfect. Um. Yeah, and, and EJRP and Essex Parks and Rec are doing a fantastic job, but they are like stretched thin. They have no extra capacity. And, you know, even if we had money, I think they'd have to hire a lot more people and figure out a lot more logistics. So I think that there's a lot of untapped need out there. Thanks, Darren. Um, talk to Nisha. I just wanted to know the age uh, range uh, for uh, jobs. What, um, what age can they start at? Can they start at 15, 14 or 15? Or is it 16? I don't, I don't uh, know the answer to that. Are there exceptions in Vermont law for 15 year olds? I don't think 14 year olds, but that's just my memory from being a 14 and 15 year old in Vermont. Does anybody know the answer to that? Um, Depending on the job, it's 15. There might be limited hours. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All the Rod? factor vaccinations at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm hopeful that uh, vaccinations and, uh, um, you know, and the, the, Cases going down um, will coincide with the uh, the um, ramp down. If I recall correctly, the bonus for the pandemic will ramp down at some point, um, and that those and that those will start incentivizing um, the uh, if this is the issue of um, pe um, people um, staffing our um, small businesses. So, um, all right. Um, um next i have on the agenda i have uh, updates from partners and staff um does um who, who wants to go first i'll let we so go first she's a big boss after all <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so i don't have a lot to update but um but i did attend a um a webinar hosted by Molly Gray on um, on Bill S33, which which deals with TIF districts and TIF. Um, if you don't know what TIF is, it utilizes the um, the incremental difference between developed between a, a, an undeveloped property and a developed property or a more highly developed property, um, and uses that increment. Um, to pay for infrastructure upgrades, and it's it's a beautiful tool when it works well. Um, and um, in any case, the um, the state has been reluctant to allow more TIF districts. But again, as I said, it's a great tool when it when it meets the situation's need. And the um, and anyway, I'm going to be following that just to see where or if it can apply to any of the work that uh, that Essex will embark upon. 
and other than that, I just, I mean, we're we're chipping away at zoning and um, just doing our work. Fair enough. Thanks, Uisa. Um, was should we do should we do Robin next? You're doing me now, Grant. That's good to know. Um, yeah, Planning Commission, uh, we're working through an updated land development code. Uh, also, uh, we have a meeting to at six. You know, if anybody has their dinner before then, just chime in. Um, three o'clock today for an hour, we're discussing, just for change, the one Main, main Street uh, Pocket Park with committees in the village, uh, Tree Advisory Committee, Bike Walk Committee, Planning Commission are also going to be there. Um, I've been talking to the two buildings that are going up at the minute, uh, 11 Park Street, uh, 3 Maple Street. They both like to have a ribbon cutting with the trustees. Um, 11 Park Street is scheduled to be the end of June. It looks like it might make it. 3 Maple Street is scheduled to be the end of July. I'm not sure they're going to make it unless some minor miracle happens between now and then. Uh, there is a, an affordable housing building going in as part of the uh, Chittenden Crossing uh, development. It's going to be in the area that now has the, um, what is it, it's the dog training or probably dog owner training, more to be truthful, um, facility just off uh, Park Street as you're coming into the village just after you cross the first tracks. That's happening. We're still working through trying to get uh, Genesee and Wyoming stroke NECR to do the real upgrades this summer so we can bid the road in autumn uh, for construction next spring. They are waiting for the contract funds to come from Amtrak as part of the Amtrak earmark, which they're going to use to upgrade the track for the village. We'd ask them to try and get the money off uh, Amtrak so VTrans wouldn't pay for it. It looks like they have a ver uh, verbal agreement, but they don't have the contract signed yet, so they're working through the details on that. And as we says, just working through the normal everyday stuff. Um, probably with the old 197 um, Toro dealership was, in fact, that's where I bought my first lawnmower when I came to Vermont. Um, that building's going to be demolished in the next few months. It's already got approval for apartments and retail commercial. So these are things that are happening. Um, there's probably going to be a, a little pizza uh, pop-up thing uh, beside the Firebird Cafe this summer. And it looks like you know, we're moving away from Chinese restaurants more towards um, pizza restaurants and ethnic restaurants in the village center. Um, the space that had been open for a long time as part of the Fort Pearl Street building, the corner of um, Park Street and Park Terrace looks like it's going to be occupied within the next month to six weeks. So that's the biggest uh, commercial space filled there. There's only one space that won't be, uh, it will be vacant for a little while longer, though there are negotiations with people at the moment. Mark Barbecue is going from strength to strength, hooking up with First Republic. So lots of small things uh, happening. Hopefully they'll all come to bother and people will see better what the jigsaw puzzle is going to look like in the end, which is a few years away yet. Any questions? So Robin, on that uh, uh, 11 park and uh, what is it? Two, three, three maple, three maple. All all right, the right. numbers. Uh, so those ones that are opening this summer, uh, is that just the residential portion or do, is, is there commercial that's going to be occupied? Well, that's not the way they do it. Uh, the commercial is a bonus for them. It's not it's not how they cover their nut. But the three Maple Street project from day one has had a restaurant as part of the project. I think they may be partial owners, so they will get a restaurant. It'll be the first as you're walking away from the five corners. The first unit on the entry level will have a restaurant in it. And that's why I keep saying we should be changing the name to food corners, but um, it seems like it will get somebody in it um, almost instantly. Okay, good. Nice. Nice. Uh, that makes Sam next. 
Okay, um, I, I have nothing specific to report, save that we RDCs are closely watching a number of bills that are in their last uh, machinations of uh, development. The sausage making is started and conference committees will start soon. There are a number of, of bills we're watching. We so talked about TIFs. We're waiting to see if they do an extension that's been requested because of the pandemic. Um, some of the municipalities have asked for a three-year extension. Um, many TIFs, um, it, it's likely because the house bought that they'd only consider doing a project, a project specific mini TIF and see how that goes. Um, still watching S10. Um, Tatanisha, when I say S or H, that means a bill that was started in the Senate or the House. S10 is about unemployment insurance. Um, so, there is S101 bylaw modernization grants for municipalities. We're watching, of course, the broadband issue and the larger budget issue. There is conflict currently with the administration over how the ARPA funds are being designated. The state legislature would prefer to put a little bit in this year and then uh, disperse more um, uh, in the following two years. It's anticipated the session will end around the 21st, 22nd. Short of coffee cup, uh, which is being triaged currently, um, and I can't go into detail on that, um, there are some interested parties on that. I know it's not in Essex, but nevertheless, when any business with over 100 uh, employees, in this case, 150, around 150 for us and 90 for Southern Vermont with the Vermont Big Company, um, we look at and uh, work on to see if we can't find quick recovery for both the employees and the communities. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Do you, do you know, Sam, if uh, I, I think I read that Coffee Cup closed too quickly and that they had to fix it? Is that what the, the triage to which you're referring? Yes, uh, federal and state law require a notification well before closure. Um, the, in this case, the company closed abruptly without giving state or federal um, notification. That's uh, been the impetus for the employee lawsuit, civil lawsuit, in that they weren't notified and given appropriate uh, uh, severance. So that all has to play out. There are exceptions. And it gets into a very gray area. Would notification have negatively impact possible negotiations is what will need to be sorted out with potential new owners. So that's all got to go through the process of evaluation. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Any other uh, any other questions for Sam? Commission members. All right. Did, uh, do we uh, are there other other like partners and staff that we uh, usually um, get updates from here? Um, right. I can give you a couple of quick updates from the uh, manager's office. Uh, just as you. I've probably heard at this point the village. I'm just going to close my door. One second. Uh, 
the village trustees are exploring um, uh, separation for, for Essex Junction, looking into creating an independent city of Essex Junction. Um, still early days, but the village is moving on it um, pretty quickly at this point and gathering information. So more to come on that. Um, I can try to answer any questions. Uh, Raj is here too. Um, we're also keeping an eye out for the ARPA money, which is the American Recovery Plan Act, uh, federal money that's coming in. Um, Sam, I think you mentioned that, but uh, we're, we're still waiting on details of what that looks like, uh, but it is on our radar and thinking about projects. Um, also, last little piece of information, it's, uh, we're getting towards the end of the fiscal year. Um, so, uh, looking out for projects that we, we had on the docket, um, so, you know, spending out the money in the budget uh, that we had planned for. So, reminder for Economic Development Commission as well. Um, we have a little bit of money. I don't remember offhand how much is left at this point, but um, I can get you that answer. And if you have any any projects you wanted to wrap up uh, the last couple months of the fiscal year, now's the time to think about that. Business cards. Business cards. Cool. Um, thanks. Greg's already moved on the business cards. Just saying. Greg. On the ball. Is that why you stepped away, Greg, to print the business card? <laughs> No, I was checking on a uh, crying child. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, Clint, that was that was a joke. You did not need to explain your absence. That's fine. Um, all right. Um, who else is on here from staff that um, wants to give an update? All right. Well, then um, it is uh, nine twelve. Our next meeting is at um, is uh, on May twentieth at this at this time. Um, is uh, I would accept a movement to to adjourn. I will put in a motion to adjourn. Uh, we've we've lost uh, we've lost Botour. Um Top Tanisha, would you uh, would you uh, can I, would you second that? I second that. All right, all in favor of adjourning today's EDC meeting, please say aye. Aye or raise their thumb. Aye. Are you uh are you are you raising your thumb to to make sure you're not on my screen? So all right. Well that's phone acting up. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So um we are we are therefore adjourned. Thank you, 